Dr. Paul Mason. Vitamin K2 with calcium in the diet and protein, great for bone health. Vitamin K2 is a fascinating supplement because uh, it, it hasn't been well known for a while. The Japanese were probably the, the, as a country, the first country to start taking it seriously. It's also found naturally in cheese and it's also found naturally in pastured produce. You know, if you're having a bit of dairy and these kind of things in your diet, you're getting vitamin K2. Right. And the problem is vitamin K2 has a role in helping, I, I guess, to tell calcium where to go. Does it end up in blood vessels or does it end up in your bone? And as you know, there's some uh, very good evidence that isolated calcium supplementation increases the risk of heart disease in females. I don't advocate for calcium supplementation. I think it's something that you probably should get from the diet. And you get it from a lot of food sources. People think you only can really get it from dairy. And there's a lot of dairy intolerant people. And I'll often use the example of, do you eat eggs? Sure. It's like, does a chicken have a skeleton? Well, the building blocks of that skeleton must be in the egg, right? So, I mean, from natural animal foods, we can get calcium. So, and you don't need to go having, you know, heaps of dairy. The, the natural food that has a lot of it is uh, the small fish with bones like sardines. Um, they're very rich in calcium as well. But if you're going to have calcium, you need to be making sure that you get a, uh, enough vitamin K2. And if we're talking about bone health as well, then magnesium is certainly beneficial. But the, the key point to this story is you cannot neglect the protein. And that's often something that is underdone. So, the recommended daily range of protein is about 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, which is absolutely tiny. It, we've got studies where people actually have literally five times that amount without any detriment, as we can see on their, their biochemistry, their blood testing. Right. Um, routinely, we know that athletes, if we, you know, uh, We've got studies where we give people already very high levels of protein, 1.8 grams per kilogram per day, and then we increase that to over three. And when we're having a look at their markers of muscle formation, we can see that that difference going up to three gave extra benefit. The upper limit that we have on protein intake is absolutely ridiculous. And this whole business about it being bad for the kidneys, well, it, it doesn't actually bear scientific scrutiny. It's never really been shown. And if we think about it logically, you're losing protein into the urine coming from the kidneys. Mm -hmm. So our response as a medical profession to saying, well, you're losing lots of protein now in your, in your urine, you should eat less protein. Now, <laughs> has anybody ever just stopped for one second? Like any medical student, when, when we're taught this, did we stop for a second and think, hang on, you're losing protein, so we give you less. Is that logical? It's interesting because the entire world is hooked on this, right? Everybody believes that eating too much protein hurts your kidneys. We've got some pretty interesting stuff. So we know that, um, I mean, the kidneys is an organ, like the heart. If you exercise the heart, your heart gets bigger. It's called athlete's heart. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're, so we think that if you have a lot of you're eating a higher protein diet, your kidneys actually hypertrophy, the kidneys actually get larger. But that would suggest the kidneys actually have more functional capacity. Vitamin K2 is a fascinating supplement. The Japanese were the first country to take it seriously. It is found naturally in cheese, eggs, and pastured products like grass-fed beef. Vitamin K2 has a role in telling calcium where to go, either to the blood vessels or to the bone. There's very good evidence that isolated calcium supplementation increases the risk of heart disease in females. Dr. Mason says, I don't recommend taking calcium supplements. It is something you should get from the diet. You can get it from eggs. Eggs have the building blocks of skeleton. You can get it from small fish like sardines. And of course you can get it from dairy. And you need to be getting enough vitamin K2 also. And magnesium is also important for bones. But the key point, do not neglect the protein, which is often underdone.
the daily recommended amount of protein is about 0.8 grams per one kilogram of ideal body weight. This is absolutely tiny. Studies have shown that even five times this amount works without any detriment seen in blood tests. Studies for athletes starting at 1.8 grams per one kilogram body weight, then increasing that to more than three grams per one kilogram, that this gave extra benefit. The upper limit we have on protein from the medical profession is ridiculous, and the business that it is bad for kidneys does not bear scientific scrutiny. Think about it logically. If you are losing protein into your urine and the medical response is, we advise less protein. Dr. Glan says, it seems like the entire world is hooked on protein hurts kidneys. The kidney is an organ like the heart. If you exercise the heart, it grows and develops. We think it is the same with the kidney. Eat a high protein diet, the kidney will hypertrophy, get larger, and it will have more functional capacity. Annotated, summarized. Please share with a loved one.